So yeah, this is just to you know show um, but where we started and where we uh, we got to. You know, so, and you can you know it's didn't take that long to get there. You know, to to make it kind of a cool lizard guy. Um, I'd probably spend like another hour or so, and then it'd be like really cool. But uh, hopefully it's all right. Um, all right, so we're going to go on to, I'm going to show you the process. Now, that was 2D, and, and I kind of explained the reasons why we do 2D, and there's such a demand, and it's actually, to do something that elaborate, you know, from scratch or whatever like that is so much quicker than it is to do that in 3D, texture it, and all that fun stuff. So I'm not going to completely, um, when I go into 3D right now, I'm not going to do it completely from scratch because we don't have that much time. Uh, but I will show you some cool um, uh, things. Uh, one is, um, I'll just open it up, it's ZBrush, so some original, um, let's see, I think that's it right there, all right. Um, so so uh, the Stranger Things, everybody's familiar with Stranger Things, I'm sure. Um, the original movie, it, the original show, and this, they do this a lot of times that when you're doing stuff, uh, almost every show has like a, a, a mock name, and this was called Montauk for whatever reason. Um, we thought, oh, that's kind of an interesting name. And then they named it to Stranger Things like while halfway through the movie and, or the show. And we're like, oh, OK, well, whatever. But they do that a lot. So um, but what I'm going to show you is like, here's an, um, kind of a, because a lot of times with, with that kind of thing that's really um, a creature that we know is going to be built for 3D and it's going to be something a little bit more elaborate and um, not as human. Then we go right into like more of a, uh, a ZBrush kind of model. And um, let's see, I'll turn this. Right. So funny enough, this is, this is what you, uh, one of the original designs was just like, it's got quite a posture there, doesn't it? Hello. <laughs> New frame. Yeah, it was, uh, but. You know, a lot of the designs that we were doing early on, it was that, that weird mouth and stuff. And it kept changing as we were going, but this is just one of the... And it's funny, because parts of this was utilized for the final as we were designing it. And, you know, the way the hands are, kind of the way the feet are and certain things. But, uh, but the posture obviously wasn't as uh, uh, odd. Um, but I just wanted to give you... No one's really seen that, so I thought you'd get a kick out of, like, an early design. Now I'm going to show you um, kind of the final Montauk, which was actually the Demogorgon. And this was uh, the final before we actually started to rig it and do all the um, other fun stuff with it. It's kind of huge. So, uh, yeah. So it's... Uh, so, yeah, there was, a, like, you, so the, the feet are kind of similar to that last design, certain aspects of it. Um, but there was, for this too, is what we had to do is we had to create this in a way because some of it was used as a guy in a suit. So it had to fit a guy in a suit. So his legs would be through here, his feet would be on stilts. Um, that was utilized in the show here and there and I helped art, art direct the, the company. It was called Spectral Motion in Los Angeles and very talented people, um, group of artists and they had an animatronic head. But a lot of times the director wanted to do things it couldn't do. So that's, you know, so we did the, uh, we had to actually take the scan and this is the scan of that and actually bring it into um, here and re remodel it uh, to some extent. So, but it's kind of, kind of fun to see it. So this is first time you're seeing inside the mouth of the Demogorgon. Woohoo! Um, I won't waste too much time on that. I just wanted to show you because I thought it's kind of cool. All right, let me uh, just... So a lot of times we're, we're designing creatures, uh, you know, that are um, that that are very odd shapes. So it's like, you know, like this one here. Um, you know, this is for a project I'm uh, up up to direct called Embodied, and um, and there's just a, this kind of weird kind of alien that kind of uh, grows from within us. And it's called Embodied. Um, and something like this is, you know, very difficult to do in Photoshop. And knowing, too, at the same time that we're we're going to be making this into an animated asset that's going to run around and, you know, kill people and all that fun stuff, that we wanted to um, 
you know, start there. We, a couple of the artists, you know, a lot of the artists actually, when they're designing stuff like this, you know, I always encourage them to do a sketch before they actually jump into 3D when they're doing something this elaborate. Um, this was actually done by uh, artist uh, Kyle Brown, um, very talented, uh, but um, it's just, it's really cool. So what's great about this is that, you know, we, we end up using poly paint and all that stuff and you know, early on, and, and this would just uses um, an idea and I'll just quickly, nothing new here, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go through, uh, through another one in the whole process, but this one I'll do fairly quick. Um, so this has some poly paint textures on it. Um, you know, your standard poly paint. And the great thing with, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the tools like um, Keyshot and all that stuff is, you know, being able to just work, you know, from uh, here back and forth with Keyshot to see how you're working. So external render, uh, why is it not working? Keyshot there, okay. And then groups, and then click that, and it opens up Keyshot. But a lot of times, you know, we get into a, a model that we actually um, start messing around with uh, that, that has textures already on it. Like, the, well, once we've spent the time doing that, we can actually do many iterations and variations. Um, so what's great about that is that you know it brings in all the uh, materials or the uh, and the the textures. Um, what I ended up doing is it, I didn't there was no special uh, material on this, so it just comes in with a base, but it doesn't have any spec on it. And I think this creature should be pretty shiny, so I just kind of pull up the spec and uh, maybe put a better background behind it so it looks. A little bit more, and just am amazing how quick you know you have like a cool design that now, uh, especially like a close up like this, I could just go in and go into s uh, depth of field, and um, and just uh, select the area I want to be in focus, and uh, the new key shot, um, and it may just be my Mac and stuff renders the the, the old um, depth of field was so slow. You know, it was very, it took forever for it to render. Um, but the new one um, is, is just fantastic. It's fast and it, and it may be that it runs really well on a Mac. Um, but you can see how quick, you know, you got that shallow depth of field and, you know, and it's kind of taken the background too and blurred it. So it's, you know, sometimes, you know, what I'll end up doing um, is, you know, even when I'm working in here, I'll get to a place and I go, you know, this is actually looking pretty cool. And I, I sometimes will render in here, but sometimes it takes a little long and it's actually doesn't always look the same. And if I'm like pressed for time, I'll just do a screen grab of the whole thing. And, um, and then I'll, you know, then I'll bring that in Photoshop and, and start messing with it really quick. I mean, what we try to do is, is find shortcuts to do stuff really fast. So when we actually have, um, sorry, <laughs> I didn't even think that that was going to be that loud. It was a cough drop. Um, just crop off all this, this excess stuff. Now yeah, why did I do that? I love this heel tool, it just fixes everything. Um, now it's like, you know, I just quickly. You know, add a new layer and um, we vignette it. And then I'll uh, quickly put a cool eye in there and then that's a cool eye.
So the thing is, a lot of times people will spend a lot of time, you know, uh, setting it up and rendering it. And, you know, I've told my artists sometimes they come back and, you know, it's like, and they're waiting forever for it to render. Like, you saw how quick that was. You know, it's just a concept art. It's, you know, for that has to go out to a client. And, um, you know, if they spend, you know, hours and hours on just rendering, it's, it's a waste of time. So, you know, just doing even like that where it's just, you know, you didn't do a proper render, just a screen grab based on, you know, this and, you know, you already have something that's pretty freaking cool just as a, a one concept. Now you can quickly do... Let me put a speck in there. So the resolution isn't great, but you know, it's perfect for uh, just a concept that's going out real quick for a client when you want to get, you know, like 10 of these out, like. Because what you can do is now you can go back and take this model um, that was created and, and start messing around with it and making it different. Uh, you know, and then do another render from a different angle and it looks like a different creature. You know, sometimes that's that's, all you need really for a client to kind of get their head around like, you know, where you're going with these creatures and um, designs. But if you have like two or three of these going at once um, that quick, it's, you get quite, you know, quite a speed on the, the final result. So that's just real quick. That's, that's uh, you know, just shows you how quick you can if you have like a model kind of built. And to get to that place, to get that model and all that stuff, that's very time consuming just to get to where I just was. But once you have it, you can do very, so many variations. All right, now I'm going to go and let's see, show you something else. Let me just clear this out. Why is that? All right. So weird alien head. So this was uh, an. A lot of times when designing and stuff, we'll you know, have a bunch of like mock, uh, mock heads. When I actually started this, um, I actually used uh, um, this head here, the demo head, uh, to create this. So, you know, you can, it was just one. I was doing a demo a while back, and I just kind of started it from scratch. I'm not going to go through that whole process cause it's, because we're really limited with time. I, I spent a little longer than I um, on the Photoshop process, but I wanted to have something that you could see that process all the way through. Um, so this is just, you know, um, a standard little alien head. And uh, let's see what's going on with the eyes there. So I'm going to quickly... I just wanna, the eyes look like they were doing something weird. All right, so now I'm going to just show you... Oh, why did I do that? I'm going to do polypaint, put it on a material that is a little easier to paint with, turn off Z add and just have uh, RGB on. And then, uh, oh dear. What did I do there? Hmm, I'm having a little trouble here all of a sudden. I'm all right, let me use this. That off. All right.
Alright, what am I doing here? Let me do something real quick. I'm going to move this into... Alright, I'm going to avoid that uh, process just because of her time and everything else and um, show you a quick way of how I texture a head in Keyshot. So you could do it in uh, Polyfaint or um, we could do it in here, which I actually have uh, kind of a quick little process that, so one, I'm going to create a material that actually is a little, let's just do, We'll start with this right now. And I'm gonna make the background um, just an image or color actually right now. All right, so so there's different ways you could you know do polypaint. You could also um, mess around with seamless textures, and uh, what's great is you can just you know drag and drop these like this weird texture here. Contrast out and then All right, let me find a better environment. So, get my light in there. And also, you can create, obviously, uh, lights very easy. If I'm going to put like a bounce light over here um, by just creating a, this new one, um, new key shot, you have to actually create a, uh, an object for it. And then you can put a material on it. Like a light, let me just zoom out. Lights, and you have all these options of cool lights. Put that and that turns that into a light. And now I can
change. Uh, put a different material for the eyes, just so there's something shiny on them. All right, and so the textures, you know, it's great because um, you can just experiment with differently. You know, textures by dragging and dropping it onto this and just seeing what the results are. So it's kind of a cool, you know, breaks up the skin really nicely. Let's see, then you can play around with the contrast and so we can see it a little better. All right, let me just move this light over a little bit more. So what I'll end up doing a lot of times is uh, rendering out like a few different passes, like this is a kind of a cool texture, and render this out as a pass, and then do another one with a different type of texture that can splice on. Um, and then for that, if I want to do like, say this is good because it's a close-up, we can do a shadow of depth of field, and it could be kind of cool, but I don't want to do it in here, I'll just do that in Photoshop. So I'm just going to turn this down. It doesn't have to be that high res. Um, but I may do an ambient occlusion pass too, just so I have it. Um, sometimes the ambient occlusion is not that great in here, and I'll do another pass that's ambient occlusion with a, a, a shader. Um, and then uh, let's see, what else do I Go down the right folder. And then the background, let's see, I'm going to probably do, so I can put a different background behind it. So I'll do a TIFF, include the alpha. 
And then um, these options in here too, is, you know, the sampling and stuff. I just, I reduce this. I don't, instead of um, putting it on any of these other ones, there's no reason it needs to be, you know, for the most part, over the, around 6970. Um, and then just hit render. We'll see how this does. If it takes too long, then I'll just stop it, but it should go fairly quick. It's like grass growing. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll end up doing, you can do it in, uh, uh, what I like to do it in passes because I can do several options. So when you're doing a character design, a lot of times in, um, you do some variations on this and that's one uh, design in itself. And then um, some of the other passes create different looks and different, um, so in one, uh, one uh, model with a few different textures and different, you know, augmentations and uh, um, distort, you know, uh, the way you lay it over, maybe distort it and paint in, in Photoshop, you can get like five or six designs out of this one um, fairly quick. So it's taking a little longer than I wanted it to, it's, uh, so I'm going to stop that. And then just going to bring this down more and then, let's see, I'm just going to do... Let's see if that makes a difference. There we go. It's more like it. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, we, we, I encourage a lot of times for uh, artists to draw stuff before they even, you know, commit and uh, ZBrush or anything. Um, but a lot of times clients can't read it, and the ones that actually want it um, realize they don't because they, they can't read it. Because they're so used to being, they're spoiled from this process of seeing something that's more refined and answers a lot of questions, like translucency or, you know, um, all the different things that um, you can't get with a drawing. Um, but some, some clients ask for it. They just they say, hey, we just want to see sketches first. And, um, and we do it, and um, eventually we'll sneak in like an image that's more refined, and that's the one they always go for. So it's, it's an interesting uh, process because it's, it's really, um, we've kind of like in this process have spoiled them. Yeah. All right, so that finished. That's good. Uh, I'm going to do a couple other things, a couple other versions. Um, Change the material a bit and uh, the texture. Let's see. Translucent. So I found um, sometimes plastic, uh, like the translucent, they have a skin shader, but so the plastic sometimes has a lot of the same effects, but it's, it renders a lot faster. Um, let's see, is that the right one? Ah, no, this is it. Well, I'm just going to use skin. Uh, sometimes it takes a bit to um, mess around with the plastic to get it there, but and I have one preset, but I didn't bring it with me. correctly.
<clears throat> so I create uh, a lot of different textures. Um, and uh, sometimes I'll get them uh, seamless, but a lot of times you have to create them yourself, which isn't a difficult, really a difficult thing to do, but. Oh, you can do it in one. Um, it's just adjusting that you have to mess around with uh, the translucency of it. So I go back to the properties and the problem is if you go too translucent with it, then you lose some of the, uh, the surface detail, but that's where you kind of use the other layers to get that back. Um, This is a kind of a cool texture, so kind of has a, a, a neat alien kind of quality to it. So what this was, let me see. What, let me just open it up just so you can kind of see. Um, this was uh, a squid texture uh, that I tiled, and then I created like some other colors to it. So it kind of has a, a an interesting breakup. This one. Change the brightness on the texture. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. There we go. There's just some cool stuff up here. And all right, and I can just hit render. This should hopefully go pretty quick. I'll even go this down a little bit more. So I'll do like, um, like I said, I'll do probably like a, about five or six different textures. Um, and then like a, um, uh, you know, some other element passes and stuff like that. But for the most part, just so I can have a range and I can experiment and cut and splice on top of this and blend them. And I actually like to have that freedom in, in Photoshop more than having to construct it in here, um, just because also, I'll get, I'll get a more variety that I can actually, when I'm designing for a client, I can give them five or six variations really quick, as opposed to spending a lot of time building a whole like really detailed um, texture or shader um, setup that all this stuff is broken up in here. Um, that's only one. It takes me a while to do that. So I try to go as fast as I can and not spend too much time. So that didn't take too long. It rendered. It's not going to be the, great, the, the best quality because it's uh, um, I got it on a really low uh, resolution, but usually when you're rendering, this is the time when you just walk away. But I try to make it to where it's it's faster than having to you know wait on it. Uh, let's just see if what other. I know this is an ambient occlusion because typically the ambient occlusion that it renders out with is is actually pretty bad. And the idea with this is just to kind of have, so you can use it for all the contours and shapes that may not come through. This doesn't this doesn't take long to calculate at all, so it renders fairly quiet, quick. All right, let's see. I think I might just do one other one, and then I'll just go right into Photoshop and show you that since we're limited on time. 
Uh, material, we'll do a stone material. So what's cool is octopus has a, uh, I use that quite a bit because there's so many cool patterns in an octopus or squid. Um, like this one's kind of cool, the spotty one. Since I haven't changed the lighting, you know, I kept the lighting the same, then a lot of these can, you can cut and you, uh, splice some of these together, which makes it kind of an interesting pattern as well. All right, I think that's probably fine. I'll just hit render. Wait, let me just... There we go. And typically with this, and I was going to do it, we just ran out of time, is I was going to put, um, I was going to rotate it, uh, give it more of an expression and, um, uh, and ZBrush and uh, do the whole poly paint and stuff. But I think that just time-wise, this is, um, this will still get you the idea because, you know, you can imagine like if the head's turned or whatever. And All right, while that's rendering, I'm going to start opening up Photoshop with, uh, quit. I don't want to quit. Why did I do that? That's done. So these renders here, I'll bring into Photoshop. Okay, so and then we just find a quick background that I can put behind it. Backdrop. So now I'm just doing it's copying all these over. Um, oh, did the wrong one.
All right, so have all those, now let me get my background and, and this is the, the, um, uh, the unfortunate render that didn't work. I won't be using that one. Uh, there it is, it was like, where's my background? Get rid of all these so it's clean. Yep, delete. All right. So put all these underneath, all the layers. So now I can start messing around with this and quickly, you know, laying some of these on top of each other and let's have to just experiment with some of these on top of each, uh, like this one, I really like the texture, so I want this one to be on the top there and use that as a soft light so we can see some of that texture in there. on top to use that as a multiply. All right, so um, I'm liking this in some places, but not everywhere. So I'm going to just erase it in places I don't like. And then I'm going to create a quick eyeball in there. We got minute, a couple of minutes left.
Okay. Uh, set layer. Let's see. So this has kind of an interesting cow eye thing going, which is cool. So now I'm just going to quickly, uh, I want more time, but unfortunately we're running out of time. And so I was going to show you some other examples of how to um, take this to, an, uh, you know, how to experiment with different shapes and all that stuff. But um, that'll have to be the next time I'm out here. Uh, but right now I'll just try to quickly finish this off by doing the same thing where I do a shallow depth of field. It's too much. All right, so um, just by doing that, it kind of helps bring it into the background real quick. So it gets rid of that, cuts that um, CG edge around it. Um, so that helps. I'll quickly do some other patterns. Quickly, probably should have done this before I uh, uh, did the shallow depth of field, but I just want to bring out a couple of shapes real quick. So I'm doing is just uh, with an overlay, just kind of doing the kind of shadows um, and contours into the, the, the crevices just to kind of bring out some of those shapes. And then since I did that uh, depth of field, I'm just gonna smudge that so it's a little blurrier there. Sometimes what I'll do too is I'll lay over other textures like I did with a lizard. I'll find some uh, other like elephant skin or something like that just to kind of create another layer of texture. All right, now I'm gonna do some highlights.
So I'm just going back and forth with shadows and highlights. It's a good idea, like, not to um, leave it, uh, like, with the blur and stuff, because it's like, it feels, you know, it feels digital with the, the blur there, so it's like adding this, which I did before, is um, uh, adding some kind of a painter texture, or it could be a, um, some other type of texture. It could be like um, noise sometimes helps too, as well, just so that the, the blurry areas aren't um, soft and the other parts aren't. It's I think I'm pretty much there, so uh, and then we just kind of ran out of time, but, um, but at least you kind of see like, you know, the two different methods of, of designing from uh, um, 2D to 3D and uh, the potential, you know, there's this, you know, th this is a process that sometimes takes longer even because, you know, the idea of going in and having to manipulate render, do all the different passes and stuff, but, and the, the end result is you can get probably even more variations out of uh, 3D. Um, because you can show, you can render it from different angles quickly. You know, ZBrush change the shape of it and bring it back in different textures. Um, so there's a lot of advantages. So it's just figuring out which uh, um, which job it's the right process to to move forward with 2D or 3D. So hopefully that was uh, helpful and um, everybody enjoyed it. And um, you know, it's it's been a pleasure being uh, here in Melbourne and. I appreciate all of you guys uh, coming and and uh, spending times. And if you have any question, uh, let me know. Thank you.